I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at Wonder Woman, issue number nine. Diana has been cut off from the Themyscira. What's she going to have to do to get home? Well, let's pop on in and find out together, shall we? Okay, so this is an odd numbered issue, which means we're in the present. As we join the comic, Steve Trevor and his military detachment report to their boss, a woman named Bordeaux. And I mean, holy crap, you think this woman's trustworthy? Let's look at her. She's got one blue eye and one red eye with a big gnarly scar over it. She also takes a particular interest in what role Wonder Woman played in taking down Cadulo and that plant god from the previous arc. Of course, Diana is nowhere to be found at the moment as she and Etta Candy decided to take an old friend out shopping. Yeah, go figure, now that Barbara Ann Minerva is no longer the cheetah, now that she's human again, she's gonna need some new clothes. She was saving a bundle up until this point just running around naked as a cheetah monster. In a nice joke, Etta asks, hey Wonder Woman, you picking up anything? Thing. Nah, Etta, I don't do that. Whenever I change my outfit or even my hair, people tend to freak the fuck out. A nice metatextual joke to the long history of fans overreacting to every time Wonder Woman changes her costume. Okay, now you'll remember in a previous issue we saw a woman who worked with Etta Candy and everyone else kind of get taken control of by a robot. Yeah, well, we get to go back to that story and see what's going on. Turns out the robot works for a woman named Veronica Kale. Who's Veronica Kale? Well, if you read the original Greg Rucka Wonder Woman run, you would know she's essentially Wonder Woman's answer to Lex Luthor. An evil industrialist who's more than just a little obsessed with Wonder Woman and who will no doubt be a bigger villain down the line. From there, we transition on over to Wonder Woman going to meet Steve. Yeah, these two have a lot of issues to talk through. We got the feeling in the last arc that they were meeting each other again for the first time in a long time. They talk about how there was always kind of a spark between them, how they always loved each other and circled each other, but Wonder Woman would go off and be with Superman, and well, we all know how that ended up. Diana talks about how she's always been a lover, but how she's never really been any good with romance, and saying when she was with Superman, the mightiest man on Earth, well, it was kind of simple, but loving a human like Steve, that's gonna take some doing. She is certainly up for it, and the two embrace each other in a kiss before the real hard work starts. That being, how do we fix Wonder Woman's memories up, and more importantly, how do we get her back home to the Themyscira? Barbara Ann Minerva has some theories on this one, saying that the Themyscira doesn't exactly exist in any physical sense in this world, but it exists on a spiritual level. Basically, the island's not in the water anymore, it's in another dimension, a dimension that up until now, Wonder Woman was freely able to access without even knowing she was doing it, but now something or someone has cut her off from it, and the only way for her to get back is for her and Steve to try and find a place where the barrier between two dimensions are at its weakest. They managed to do that, and as the comic ends, boom, there they are, right in the Themyscira, but things do not look too good for them as the comic ends. Wonder Woman 9 was a cool little issue that definitely opens up the world, or at least the present timeline of the Wonder Woman world. It is, however, just a tad disappointing that now that we're finally getting to see some movement with Wonder Woman's missing memories and the Themyscira and everything, we're going to have to wait until the issue after the next one to actually find out what happens. It's nice to see Greg Rucka attempt to grow the Wonder Woman's rogues gallery, even if that means reaching back to his older run to bring back some characters. You also got to appreciate the extra effort that's been put on to focusing on the relationship between Steve and Diana, a uh, facet that so often goes overlooked, especially for Steve, a character who can come off so milk toast. The art's definitely not as eye-popping this issue, which is unfortunate, but overall I would still probably give this one an 8 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.